just after 10.20 p.m. and I'm sitting in the kitchen of my parents' house in Sunbury on Thames. I've returned home for the Christmas holiday period. After leaving work at around 4 p.m., I took a bus to Waterloo Station and then got the 432 Shepparton service that calls at Sunbury on Thames. Earlier on, we had liver, bacon, mashed potatoes and Brussels sprouts, followed by mince pies and custard for the evening meal. The bags I was carrying containing all the Christmas presents, as well as records, cassettes, art material, and numerous other things were extremely heavy. Jonathan, my brother, should be showing up tomorrow. For the duration of my visit, I will be occupying the front bedroom. to John Field's festive 50 in the kitchen, where the remains of our evening meal are still festering. <laughs> Mashed potato. Five tomatoes on the windowsill. Grains must be prepared in much the same way as sweetbreads. They should first be put in a basin, and the basin put under a running cold tap for two or three hours. Then the fine membrane must be removed and any little bits of blood. They must then be put in a quart of brulon, brought to the boil and simmered for three quarters of an hour. I prefer them cut out. 
The Godfather Part 3 is coming to an end. In a club, the chef would probably buy a whole turbot. A turbotin, young turbot. Maybe quite small, so it might be bought by the housewife or house husband. If you do, cut off its head and de-gut it, keeping the head for fish stock or pussy. A small household is more likely to buy turbots either in steaks or in a piece of about three pounds for four and pro rata. Do not skin it. The black skin comes off very easily after cooking and the white skin should stay on. Saturday morning and it looks very cold outside. It's about 9.55. Baked beans, bacon, toast and a cup of coffee have been consumed. Inside the Elms Shopping Centre, listening to the Salvation Army Band. Davies angling. I'm looking around the back streets of Staines. I've decided I'll have a pint at the Hob Goblin pub. As on previous occasions, Ashford is my next destination. Then on to Sunbury. <laughs> Rotary Club of Ashford. attached to two Christmas trees on top of the car as well. Message to parents. As responsible parents, we protect our children by teaching them the rules and regulations of water safety, fire safety, and bicycle safety, among others. This book will help you and your child learn the most important safety lesson of all, body safety. As you go through this book with your child, or a child you care about, it's important to take the time to be supportive and available for any questions they might have. If you feel awkward or embarrassed, you should direct the questions to someone else your child feels comfortable with. Above all, the child must receive the answers and the information that will help him or her deal with a dangerous situation. This book is not meant to scare but rather to educate. Children need to learn the words and phrases in this book and use them to say no, to tell their parents if something is wrong and to be able to avoid dangerous situations. Adults, in turn, must learn to listen and must give their children the freedom to tell. Children's Justice Foundation. 
I found this record and two paperback books. Outside, everything is coated with frost. Um, what are we having for the evening meal tonight? Cauliflower cheese and bacon, followed by trifle. <laughs> Jonathan just came into the bedroom where I was reading and gave me two chunks of homemade Turkish delight. The consistency was wrong, but the taste was quite pleasant. Twenty past two in the morning. Jonathan still downstairs watching the Quilla memorandum. I saw about an hour of it. They kept on dozing off. Stein, a life. Young Ludwig, 1889 to 1921. What a way to go. Some of the strangest deaths on record. A fountain pen. Two bars of Toblerone. Some walnuts. Case. Barnett had a little brown ribbon through the... Uh, never mind about the brown ribbon. You then took the seal to Bristol in a stagecoach. 
And upon arrival, promptly threw her over a cliff. Toast, marmalade and coffee were consumed for breakfast. And the Christmas meal will be served at around 2 p.m. A table has been put in the front room with a white tablecloth over it. His tremendous bouts of drinking had wrecked his health. He was thin as a rail and had a cough. He thought of Cynthia now in the lonely and hostile town, and he became afraid. He thought he had tuberculosis and that he was going to die. So alone and lost again, having found neither order nor establishment in the world, and with the earth cut away from his feet, Oliver resumed his aimless drift along the continent. He turned westwards towards the great fortress of the hills, knowing that behind him his evil fame would not be known. I'm looking outside the window through a piece of purple cellophane it's pouring with rain. Oh, and what to do and what to say. You're trying to be good in everything you do. But sometimes bad things happen to you. It's the way you feel and don't let go. Don't keep secrets that you know are bad. Don't keep secrets if they make you sad. Then you can go back and color the pictures. Are you ready, Ken? Remember, not right? supposed to write a book I don't know. Yes, my puppy wants to return something that she borrowed from your mother. Jonathan, Mum, and Dad seemed quite pleased with the presents I'd bought them. Around half an hour ago, I helped Mum with the washing up. It's now all lying on the kitchen table, waiting to be put away. All right. <laughs> Coming, uh, What's up? Nutrition fellow. You run your own business up there in Chorley. I do, yeah. You're going to South Africa in uh, New Year. Well, I'll be working in a restaurant, actually doing some work. Okay, getting presents, time off work. Dom? Hello, Dom. I think it would have to be the hot season. <laughs> I think on Boxing Day, I'll spend a lot of time doing my collage work and other things of that kind. Right, second question. This goes to number two. As you know, my surname is Orange. This is because I'm a very appealing, full of zest. The 15th class probably the most famous range of locomotives designed by and built. for the South African Railway. Boxing Day, I'm sorry, but there appears to be a... A lot of technical problems with this recording. White sauce with mustard for those who do, white sauce without for those who don't. Not putting you to too much trouble, are we, dear? Oh, no. Not surprisingly, we'll be having turkey for lunch today. I've spent the morning reading. Outside, there are a lot of cars parked along the avenue. They're attending the races at Kempton Park.
きてるべ I'm listening to three cassettes that Thomas Sutter in Missouri sent me whilst doing some work on my collages. It's just before 5 30. I think at around 8 o'clock I'll walk up to Sunbury Village and visit the Magpie and have a couple of pints of beer. Or maybe move on to some other pub. The screw machine tool is held by its shank in a vise, and the slotting attachment is set at an angle so as to give the proper clearance to the cutter that it is intended to use in the slot. A hole is drilled for starting the slot. In slotting work, all necessary movements of the table are made by the hand feed. Care should be taken not to feed the work too rapidly, or a broken cutter and damage to work may result. Mum's just come into the kitchen to make us all a cup of tea. I think she's preparing some biscuits as well. Oh, yes, those ones look nice. Red mullet is sometimes called the woodcock of the sea. That is, I think, because one does not take out the inside of either, rather than because it should be elevated to woodcock rank. I should not call woodcock the mullet of the air, so highly do I rate it. I might call it the caviar, the lobster, or the chateau la f i t e My recipe for Boodle's orange pool is not, I fear, from the horse's mouth. I don't know if Boodle still m a k e it. I cut it out of a newspaper before the war and did not even record the name of the newspaper. The c o l o r of the paper and the typography make me think it was the Express. Anyway, this is what it says, and very good it is. Take the juice of four oranges and two lemons. The grated rind of two oranges and one lemon. Sweeten to taste and add a pint of cream. Fill a bowl with sponge cakes. Four make enough for eight people. Cut in four and pour the mixture over. Allow to stand for several hours before serving so that the juice permeates the cakes. This seems to me really more like a trifle than a fool. Okay, Mum. I'll be back in around an hour's time. Okay? Okay, dear, bye. It's good to get some fresh air after all the claustrophobic family atmosphere. <laughs> Saffron Antiques, Sunbury 787907. Ten pounds off most items. <laughs> This is from a newspaper article in the window. Something old, something new. <laughs> There's lovely things for you at Saffron Antiques. Step into a shop that has been established for the last 14 years, and you'll find yourself within a treasure trove of delights. Not only will you find furniture and bronzes, but a selection of beveled mirrors, which have to be the cheapest in town. Perfect for Christmas gifts. Saffron Antiques specializes in unusual day and evening wear, but did you know that you could also find a perfect antique wet dress as well to buy or hire? Looking down into somebody's kitchen, on a white tile surface, there's a red plastic torch, a coffee percolator, and half a loaf of bread. I can hear the cassette recorders playing up again. I'm in the gents' toilet of the Magpie Hotel, having consumed a pint of beer. I think I might walk round in a circle back to the avenue. The Flower Pot Freehouse. Some of you listening might have been with me to this pub before. I'm about to enter.
great stairs was coming to the end of the barrel and tasted rather sour, so I took it back and got a pint of King Hate. I think the technical trouble is still continuing. Looking into somebody's front room, there were three elderly women and a Christmas tree with red lights. I think after having something to eat, I'll probably continue with the collage work, because there isn't anything in interesting to say. Although I've already had one visit to the toilet, my bowels are on the point of bursting, so I can't wait to get back home. All we had was turkey sandwiches followed by an orange. Mum's just preparing some Ovaltine in the kitchen, and I'm watching for a few dollars more. I switched off that film about 20 minutes from the end, and I'm now lying in bed listening to the wind and rain outside. Moving forward in time, it's now 10.15 on Tuesday morning. About two minutes ago, Mum switched off the cassette recorder, which was playing some uh, Zan Hoffman. Why did you switch it off, Mum? I hope this isn't going to Zan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do, yeah. Well, it was quite near to sending me mad, that's all, so I, I switched it off. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
upstairs listening to one of the solo piano records I bought dad so I thought it would be a good opportunity for me to listen to some more Zan Hoffman <laughs> we'll be having fish and chips for dinner 4.40 back in the kitchen doing collage work I'm feeling a bit bored actually outside it's almost pitch black It is almost true to say of leeks, the smaller the better. The big ones are good for stock and soups, but as vegetables, ones about as thick as a thumb are delicious. Wash them well if they are gritty. Trim them and put them whole into a large saucepan with just enough water to cover them. The juice of half a lemon and some salt. Boil for about 20 minutes, testing with a fork or needle to see when they are soft. Strain off the water and keep them in the pan, shaking it well to evaporate the rest of the water. Add plenty of butter and continue to shake the pan. Grind on some pepper. As you might have already guessed, I'm still doing collage work in the kitchen.
back on the main road again. Three shops boarded up with knotted pale brown wood. Pumps Essential Footwear, Clark's Bakery, and the third shop, the largest, the sign completely removed and only the neon lights with flexes visible. I think I might have something to eat soon. Wakefield Road, magenta painted red brick house with flat roof. Harlong Vietnamese cuisine. Building that curves around onto the main road. Three walls with green painted wooden beams. White graffiti on the windows. The Richmond Bookshop. White sign with brown lettering. Unfortunately it's closed. Kozachok restaurant. Ukrainian and Russian dishes. Borscht. Hearty Ukrainian soup made from fresh vegetables and meats, including beetroots, potatoes, celery, tomatoes, cabbage and mushrooms, served with smetana, sour cream. Main courses. Kotelki, tender pork fillet seasoned and coated in breadcrumbs, served with rice and salad. Lviv, served with delicious mushrooms and onion topping. Igor and Oleg, romantic, colourful but not too spicy. Made with paprika, tomato and onion topping. Serna, venison cooked in red wine and onions to an original Cossack recipe served with potato dumplings. Siberian palmini, small pasta parcel stuffed with beef and onions served with smetana and skavaki. Holobsky, rolled cabbage leaves stuffed with beef onions and fennel, served with fresh tomato sauce and smetana. There are no words to justify violence against women, only sentences. Richmond Police Station is next door to that restaurant. The Vineyard, just a side alley. Vineyard Congregational Church. Blue wooden sign with yellow lettering. Parish notices. Old rectangular wooden board painted black with grey underneath. Rusting drawing pins at irregular intervals. The black is stained with an almost fluorescent yellow. English heritage, Bernard O'Higgins, 1778 to 1842. General statesman and liberator of Chile, lived and studied here. It's very beautiful around here. All the houses are different shapes and sizes. Straight ahead, house with fawn brickwork, white window edges, green painted door. On the top floor, there's a curtain that's a pale blue. I can see a light behind it. Looking straight into a living room window across the road, there's a woman, perhaps in her late thirties, with her head at the back of me. She seems to be talking because her head's moving from side to side. There's an orange lamp in the background. I think there's a younger person, maybe in his twenties, sitting to the left of her. I'll walk to the end of this road and investigate, then turn back and uh, perhaps at last have something to eat. Must be about 1.30 by now. Washeteria, tasteful laundrette. Wooden yellow painted facings with white, white lettering. Grove in the road to the left. Richmond Electronic Services. Seven bunches of grapes. Around the old style decorative writing. I have arrived at the junction of Mount Ararat Road. There's a church. People in the distance. On the corner of the vineyard. In the red brick building with white painted window facing. I saw a melancholic overhead lamp. Through symmetrical lace curtains a few seconds later. A bald-headed man down. down facing the window. Hands is in the window box. Again, I can see into the front room. Wrought iron candelabra. Brayton Engineering Products Limited. A rather severe Victorian building. A series of eight blue wooden doors with reinforced translucent glass. Through them, I can see a stepladder. Now a man is leaning over in the second window and has turned on a bright light. He seems to be examining something around. About 20 feet up, there's a round window. Surrounded by red bricks. It's above an oblong of blue painted bricks. In the other building occupied by the firm, there's just one single window comprising six panes. This is also surrounded by reddish-orange brick 
both horizontal and vertical. Through the lower three panes is a sort of oily spectrum. The creep in the middle one, the top three, have a sort of orange folded linoleum roll with black as a background. They've walked back and turned left into another road. Onslow Avenue, Alecca Gardens, somber red bricked house with fir trees swaying gently in the wind. The reflection can be seen on the glass of the upper windows. Through that window I can see a melancholic door frame. Through a darkened bay window opposite I can see the shiny silver metallic surfaces of hi-fi equipment and a small reel-to-reel tape recorder. As you might have already guessed, this is a very well-to-do sort of area.
house. There are ten steps leading up to the door, which is number 30. In the second floor window I can see a Chinese lantern behind a rather sparse Christmas tree. There's about five white lights and some golden decorations and tinsel hung on the branches. So there's a rather disheveled yucca plant near the end of a black car. They've got two blue plastic bags of waste tied with orange twine. One's in an olive green plastic dustbin and the other's lying on top of a black plastic dustbin. I've just turned into Montague Road. There's more peculiar shaped distinctive buildings. The one I'm looking at at the moment is number 26. There's an octagonal greenhouse attached to the brickwork on top of a garage which is sunken down. All the rooms are in darkness, apart from four tiny lights from the Christmas tree. I think what I might do after eating is have another short look around Richmond, then take the bus to Twickenham, because I saw a couple of interesting charity shops on board the 290. I'm looking at the side of a house with windows, all different shapes and sizes, irregular intervals. So there's one small window smashed and the shape formed that looks like a hooded monk. There's wood at the back. An elderly couple walking down the road. The woman's wearing a red raincoat with green lapels. The gentleman's wearing a hat, a fawn raincoat, black trousers and brown sweet shoes. I'm having a brief look down Elica Gardens. There's a strange, somber, rather austere... Well, it's actually two houses. They've got grey grainy settings with the very plain red brickwork. Oh, the white cement further down. There's a very unusual white and green ivy growing on the wall. Looking at two rather seedy windows set in a grainy white wall with white drain pipes, moss at the seams. A second window is a sort of dark red backing with streaks of green and an enormous white gash in the middle with its yellow. The first window has a like a blind with dark yellow cords and then next to it it's a sort of whole sheet of foam with a strange green rough line on the right hand side. A woman and man just emerged from the house with the regular windows. She's wearing a black coat with brilliant pink fluorescent scarf. He's wearing a puffer jacket with dark blue trousers, hair in a ponytail. London Tower of Richmond upon Thames. Road Traffic Regulation Act 1984. The Council of Richmond upon Thames as the traffic authority hereby give notice that in order to install speed bumps in the carriageway and because of the likelihood of danger to the public, a section of the Vineyard Richmond will be closed to all the southwest to southwestern flank wall. And the flat to a point on the party wall of the Vineyard. From 9.30 on Monday the 26th of September for about seven days. Bishop Dupas's almshouses, 1 to 10. Impressive grey painted Georgian houses with white window frames, feather alarm on the first one, and a yellow feather alarm on the second. Lancaster Cottages, 1850. Just next to them there's a building site, Mighton Building Restoration Refurbishment. Lime green floors with turquoise around the outside. I've emerged onto the main road. Piano Nobile, fine painting. Established 1986, quality British. Through the window, I can see ten tulips in a vase in front of a very amateur looking oil painting. London Borough of Richmond upon Thames, Refuse Disposal Amenity Act 1978. No dumping. Maximum penalty £100. Trend Interiors. 
relief silver metal lettering on a grey painted background. Lighting furniture, fabrics, carpets. Cafe Rouge. It looks rather expensive, but I think I'll go in here. Can't really leave it any longer. As I mentioned before, it must be too late to check out any more shops or anything. Richmond Antiques, incorporating more than 20 independent dealers. Hill Rise Antiques. Green painted wood with gold lettering. I will be starting up with vegetable soup, then having chicken with tarragon sauce and vegetables. I know this sounds rather extravagant. I haven't eaten out for a long time. This is rather irritating. The bread and sliced rolls are arrived, but there's no soup. The waitress is phoning up to the chef. Brown painted toilet cubicle. Plastic system with burn marks on top. The food was delicious. I don't think there will be enough time for me to have another look around Richmond. I'll have to travel straight on to Twickenham. Walking down the tarmac decline. Looking out over the River Thames. It's very windy. Beautiful <laughs> tree. Richmond Bridge Garage. Vehicle repair, servicing, MOT testing, body repair, self drive there. Yeah, I walked over the bridge. Noble Dove Laundrettes. There are pot plants on top of all the machines. And, and very harsh strip lighting. Richmond Angling Centre. Fishing tackle, bar bar and country wear clothing. A child was giving me a somewhat quizzical look. Richmond Chiropractic. Oh yeah. eight one seven four four nine one one. Back pain, whiplash, sport injury, spot screening, chiropathy, homeopathy. Marble Hill House. The I actually walked from Richmond to Twickenham, but unfortunately, the record and play switch kept flicking off all the time, so I didn't record anything in Twickenham at all. Thank you.